Hello and welcome back to another of our NLP Global Summit Speaker Interview Series. Today I am absolutely beside myself because I'm joined by the wonderful Mark McDermott all the way from the UK. Now, Mark is a very special guest. I thought, oh, all of my guests have been special, but Mark and I go way back. They, we go way back because because Mark was one of the training supervisors when I was receiving my NLP training. Um, so thank you, Mark. And it's so lovely to have you join us. It's a pleasure. It really is. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Mark is um, a phenomenal NLP master trainer and he has, his stories are are amazing. The lives that he has touched, the changes that he has made in the world and the changes he is going to make in the world um, moving forward with his, um, with his business in NLP, with the NLP training company. Um, he, he will, um, he will change so many, so many lives. So Mark, please let our watchers, let our listeners know who you are and how you got your start with NLP. Sure. Well, I'm working out who I am. It's taking a while. <laughs> but, you know, my name's Mark McDermott and I'm a, <clears throat> a master trainer in NLP and a master trainer in hypnosis, a trainer of timeline therapy and NLP coaching. And I've been around for 25 years in the field now. Um, I don't know how many thousands of people have passed through my experience, um, but it's in the thousands rather than the hundreds. And it's just been a great pleasure to, to have taken on board a skill set, which has made a lot of sense of a lot of people's lives for them and given them a chance to reassert themselves and to reclaim the life that, in my opinion, they were born to be living in the first place. And that's kind of my passion, really. So um, outside of that, I've worked in the film industry, I've worked in uh, schools and prisons, uh, and I like teaching Aikido. So that's another thing I've been doing for <laughs> over 40 years, I realized a couple of weeks back. So yeah, a lot of different things going on in my life. Aikido, I haven't heard of that before, Mark. It's, uh, well, one translation is the, the way of harmonizing with all things. Okay. It's a, it's a non-competitive, there's no competitions, uh, non-combative, but highly effective martial art where you redirect someone's energy. Oh, well, that would work. So I don't use my own. Yeah, um, okay, I can see. So that, that will... The uh, life's work in itself. <laughs> yeah, it's an art. Scary. It's an art. Second word is art. Yeah. I'm yeah. not being martial. So how you think, self-defense. I see, very interesting. Well, I can see how that would work um, with your mindset and your skill set as, as an NLP master trainer. Um, now, share with our members what they will learn from your presentation at the NLP Global Summit, Mark. Yeah, so this year I've decided to, um, <clears throat> to really push the boat out on what it is that, is the pattern behind the patterns that I normally teach. So when I'm teaching, for example, I might teach the Milton patterns, as we all know, um, 23 language patterns that are highly effective, uh, often seems very complicated. Um, and, but people say to me, you know, we've changed so much, but I don't understand how, because we're just talking. <laughs> and of course, we aren't just talking. Um, and a lot of people have asked me over time, how is it that you're being so effective at doing what you're doing? Because, you know, the range of things that I've been able to do firstly leads me to not know where that limitation is, because I really don't know what I'm capable of. And I don't think anyone does mm. until they have a go. Um, but there is an attitude and an orientation behind it all that makes a difference to me. And Richard Bandler said, that it's an attitude and an orientation that leaves behind a trail of techniques. Some people just gather techniques, but without the attitude, they are just techniques and they do work for what they're designed for. But with attitude, there's something else going on. So for me, I'm into um, transformative change. I'm into transpersonal processes as well as just technical ability. Um, and revolutionizing my own life as well along the way, because that's kind of fun and gives me satisfaction. 
so so for me finding the the pattern behind the patterns behind the patterns that make Milton work there's an opposite of a viewpoint and that's something that I'm going to um, allude to and attempt to put across by teaching multiple levels uh, simultaneously so plug in where you're at there's something for everyone there's there's beginner stuff if you're just towing the water you should find it if nothing else entertaining <laughs> um but all the Milton patterns are throughout the entire presentation for anyone who has the ears to hear um repeatedly for those who are a bit more advanced then perhaps you might start to be noticing the pattern behind what I'm doing which is what I'm alluding to and um, for people who are right out there then well find what you find because I'm doing as much as I can in it so multiple levels really I wanted it to be enjoyable for people very very simple it's very very simple what I'm talking about I want to make the world a simpler place and we can get lost in the big long letters of our complicated language but I've worked extensively with really small children you know down to six years old and you can't talk like that to a six-year-old a six-year-old doesn't care what scope ambiguity is if the six-year-old scared of dogs and isn't anymore they don't care how they got there so they went on a magic carpet ride so what but actually it's it's the pattern behind the pattern that makes it work <clears throat> and kids can teach you it all day long so I'm, i want people to be able to get to that place for themselves and um i suppose repeated viewings um would be kind of you know if you really want to get to where i'm coming from then maybe watch it again and again i guess yeah not wow. so you look at me <laughs> wow you've got me on the edge of my seat mark i'm very excited to um to 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 really sit down and 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 learn more than study it and to to really watch what you're saying i think um, it's quite um what you've alluded to is quite interesting so it's going to be uh certainly a presentation to watch and you know i i love what you say sometimes we get so caught up in the techniques and i can use this for this and i can use that for that and so on that it, it is we do forget about the attitude or we don't put that first and and it is so important so um, thank you for reminding us and thank you for sharing that that wonderful point, because I know that you've um, that, that, that you've got extensive training with Bandler as well. So um, it's it's wonderful to see the the, the range of, um, of of um, of training and understanding that you have for all of the techniques and points across um, across um, multiple, <laughs> multiple, multiple years, I suppose, of application of the knowledge, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, within within weeks of practitioner, <clears throat> so you could say just a practitioner at that point, I helped someone who had um, a double leg amputation, who had uh, phantom limb pain. Wow. And and he was he was being given dimorphine for that. And I asked the stupid question, you know, are they sticking it in your phantom limbs? And he said, no, you daft bugger, of course they're not. And I said, well, how's it going to get there? And that was the beginning of him sort of going, whoa, like, yeah. Well, I all I did was ask, you know, a little bit too, but with a bit of hypnosis and asked his unconscious mind to make the phantom limbs, instead of feeling pain, do something more interesting, like be the same size and dimensions as the artificial limbs. That just seemed to make sense to me. Yeah. And that's how it came out. So that was the beginning of me going, what can you do? Yeah. You know, but I, I didn't for a moment think I won't be able to help this person because my attitude is this is being presented to me and it's part of my projection. So I must be able to do something about it. Yeah. I've just got to figure it out. Yeah. And that's the that's the can do attitude, you know. Yeah, I do know. No do one knows know. what they can do until they have a go. You have to have a go. You have to have a go, Mark, because your unconscious mind already knows, doesn't it? It already knows is what I tell our students. You're unconscious. Truth. You just have to allow it. You have to allow yourself to believe that you can. And amazing things happen from there. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh God, that's given me goosebumps. That story. That's amazing. 
Um, Mark, why was it important for you to be part of the NLP Global Summit? I, I believe in in giving out information. I can't train everyone on the planet, you know. No, I don't I wouldn't even want to anyway. And I I have an open open source attitude to it all. I think that if I can present something at your conference and even one person thinks that it's a good idea and starts to look into the information for themselves, because I have given the gateway. I mean, there are rules, right? There are, you you have a consciousness and it operates under certain rules and we all have them so i've, I've had it as you said as as part of the the training with Tad james company the beautiful experience of of being with people from all over the world and and even working with people without english language directly and having that wonderful experience of of seeing what can happen when people work with each other in languages that they don't actually speak we, you know that's incredible to see that happening and what comes across to me is that we are all essentially the same and, and we have the same we certainly have the same system that's why i've called it the human interactive system there, there is a system and and it operates under certain parameters and you know rather than fight against that it's learn the rules and then learn the tools that can operate that system um, and then go figure, you know, once you've got that, you can do what you like, can't you? You know, mm -hmm. knowing that the map is not the territory, it's just the map that I'm making up in my head. You know, I showed some students last week how you can rub the picture out that they're looking at. I know that sounds strange, but you need a mirror and a couple of seconds and you can do that. So so they can see the pictures actually being made up inside them. Mm -hmm. It only goes for a second, but it comes back because the brain won't accept that there's no picture on the outside. But it's fun. It's called the Cheshire Cat Illusion. Um, but I, we, we believe that we're seeing the picture outside of us, but we're actually kind of making that up. Um, and that's why someone can look in a mirror and see themselves as fat or ugly when they're not, because they're actually just distorting their visual cortex and seeing their own projection in effect. So, but it's beautiful. So once you get the idea of the tools and stuff, then then who's who's driving your bus? If you're at course and it's it's your own perception effectively that you're working with then you know as you said before you've got your unconscious mind where how much do you trust i mean you know it's on 24 yeah. 7 i go to sleep it carries on making cells carries on pumping blood it does all of that i frankly don't even know how i speak i mean you know it does it all so actually i think my job is to issue the instructions yeah and, and it it follows them. So the more rapport I get with my unconscious mind, the more it, it's quick to follow the instructions I give. So I'm getting more and more careful about the ones that I do give <laughs> so that I get better results over time. Yes, yes of course. That's um, so, well, thank so all of that's what I kind of talk about in the talk, really. Yeah, I think it's going to be amazing. And thank you for being part of the NLP Global Summit and for bringing these amazing nuggets because it's great. We've got such a, 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 an array of people attending the summit. We've got people who have never studied NLP, people oh, who are practitioner level, people who are master practitioner, trainers, master trainers. So it sounds that there's going to be insights for everybody into your um into your presentation i think that will be really really helpful so thank you for having that perspective um and uh, and for looking at the bigger picture so what would you say to somebody who's thinking about registering not quite sure maybe sitting on the fence and um, joining us at the at the nlp global summit mark uh look you know it's an art and a science isn't it in some levels and <clears throat> sometimes people get mixed up on which is what and what's more important. But the truth is that if you're being creative with the help that you're giving to other people, whatever that level is, wherever that niche is, then part of that self-growth path is to witness and experience other people mm -hmm. in the field, whatever it is. As a musician, I would all, I've would i traveled and I've played with, I even toured with a group where they didn't even speak English and I didn't speak any of their languages, you know? it's as a musician i've ex i've experienced lots and lots of other cultures and that's part of it you know as a martial artist everywhere i go in the world i always drop into the local aikido dojo and practice even though i can't speak their language we can still practice as a 
a person in, in the field of NLP and hypnosis and so on, I think to really enrich yourself, part of that journey has got to be to go and experience the views of other people and to, to get outside of what you know and, and find that. And to me, it's like, you know, I go to a festival, I might go and see some, some music and performances that I went there for, but it's all those other ones that you bump into and, and things resonate and so on. So I love the fact that with such a, a wide array of uh, presenters like you've got, there's going to be some things you look at the list and you're like, yep, yep, yep. Oh, what am I going to fill in the rest of the time with? I don't know. I'll take a punt on that. That just sounds kind of interesting. And then that becomes something that maybe you're really interested in, you know, and if it's not, then it's not. But, you know, that's for me, that's the beauty of conferences in general. And, and something like this is that you, you get to find all sorts of other things that you would never so many experts in so many different ways. When do you ever get to be with your peers like that? That's right. It's so important for your own growth. It's so important. And if you've never experienced NLP and you come and see all these presentations, then you're bound to get interested in it because it's just very interesting stuff. Yeah. It's just very interesting stuff. Who wouldn't want to know? I wasn't given a manual when I was born. I wish I was. I'm writing one. You know, how to be a human, basically. You know, we could do with one. And, and until we have, then this yeah. field is, has got so much to give to everyone. That's, that's why I think it's important, really, anyway. Yeah. Mm. No, it is true. And, you know, our, anybody who's attending has the opportunity, like it's free. So, you know, you're, you're not losing anything, <laughs> only gaining. All your, you just need to spend your time watching the presentations and, and, and learning. You're going to pick up a nugget a little nugget of wisdom that might be the thing that absolutely changes the rest of your life. One thing from one speaker, if you were to get that for the cost of your time, that that in and of itself is enough. And, you know, as you mentioned, Mark, if, if people do want to upgrade and get the premium, the VIP pass so that they can rewatch and watch and watch mm -hmm. and rewatch again, the, um, the uh the presentations you can and then you have them for you know for 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 the next year and you could take one speaker every week and just watch that speaker every every you know every day for a week and you'd learn so much from that because these are some of the greatest people in the field who are presenting who are so generously giving their time their expertise and their knowledge to just to, to inform and, and share and delight. And I'm so grateful for everybody that that is participating. So, Mark, we're almost at the end of our um, our, our, our speaker um, interview. And I have one bonus question that I like to ask all of our speakers just um, through my own um for, for my own amusement. And for those that are out there, <laughs> I would I would love to know what is your most favorite very favorite nlp tool well although you know you see it, it comes to me i've got to say it milton i know it's hypnosis i want to use the word hypnosis yes. and and that's where it's at milton patterns lead to hypnosis but hypnosis is in itself a very simple thing to get a grip on but a very, very, very beautiful thing when you actually know what you're actually doing. That to me has revolutionized, and I mean revolutionized my experience, not just my work with people and my attitude and everything else, but I mean my personal experience of my own senses, which is what I've got. And, and all of that, that happens to me when I just walk about in daily life. It enables me to be what I call a secret agent of change. Yeah. So I don't just do it for money. It's not something I do. In fact, it's something I am. It's changed me literally. And so it can be someone at the bus stop while I'm waiting for a bus, that a little change for their life along the way. And the person at the restaurant who's waiting at the table, it can be everyone and anyone. And it's just such a glorious giving thing. And I just want everyone to know how wonderful it is. And how easy it is to just draw a line under the past and step forwards because the thing that hasn't existed yet doesn't have to. And in, and in that is the whole thing. The pain that hasn't happened yet doesn't have to. The person that hasn't been created in the future yet 
doesn't have to. Anyone can just draw a line and move forwards and step out and keep your memories, but flush the system and and start again if that's what it takes. But most people don't need to start again. So hypnosis to me, Milton Patterns, because everyone speaks them anyway, even if they don't know them. So if you really know it, then to me, it really is the keys to somebody's kingdom, starting with your own. And if you've got the keys to your own kingdom, like I have, then I've got the rest of my life to run amok and go around unlocking any doors. And But it also means that I can calmly just listen to people when they present to me and know that they're giving me all of the information I need through giving me the structure of their language, which is the structure of their experience. And rather than try and be clever, which is what I used to, um, I just listen to the structure because the present state is a structure and the desired state is a structure. And it's not what you have to do to get there. It's how quickly can you become the person that has. Mm. And hypnosis can can provide like a quantum leap between those two points on the map. So mm. that's to me, that's second second would be submodality shifts because they're just so amazing and simple. Um, yeah. And I, I saw the face on someone only about an hour ago that went through some such a thing and couldn't believe that they were completely different. Yeah. And that's just... How the hell did we miss that a hundred years ago? But hey, it doesn't matter because we've got it now. Yeah, it's so true. So modalities are um are, are are amazing and and so quick and seamless and 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 easy to create massive change. But language, yeah, neurolinguistic programming, it's our middle name, isn't it? And it's um it's 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 something that we all have, something that we all do. Um, yeah, it's a simple but- cause and effect. Structure of your language is structure of your experience. I know that's a complex equivalence, but the structure of your language does cause the experience to happen. There you go. I've got it into a cause and effect as well. (laughs) Mark, it's been it's been such a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being part of the NLP Global Summit and thank you for joining me today for this interview. It's been so enlightening to speak with you and just um, so wonderful to reconnect. Uh, No, I agree totally. It's been lovely to just have some time with you and lovely to, you know, to share and tell people a little bit about where I'm going with my thing. I mean, they'll have already had enough idea by now of whether um, I'm just some old fuddy-duddy that's boring or, you know, maybe there's something else in there. Um, Come and enjoy it. It's a fairground ride of sorts. If you don't like it, go and watch something else, you know. But at the end of the day, there's something for everyone in every one of the presenters. Like you said, you take a nugget. If that's that's what you take away. I know that I was at a conference recently where I just took a nugget from someone, completely changed my attitude around the subject area that the presenter was presenting. So but it's all there for us all, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It sure is. Mark, it's been a pleasure. Um, you're a gentleman and a scholar. I appreciate your time. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And I hope that everybody's thoroughly enjoyed this interview and is ready to check out Mark's presentation at the NLP Global Summit. If you have not yet, I don't think that there's um, more persuasion that we can give to you to grab your VIP ticket so that you can watch and re-watch this presentation, at least in itself, um, on the Milton pattern so that you can yourself be a master of the linguistics. <laughs> Real pleasure.